There we go. Hey everybody, Dave Hall here with Adobe Fitness Systems and Mental Meatheads. I'm coming to you with another one of our Wednesday interviews. Uh, today I have on the line Gina Lamonico, uh, who is all the way up from, uh, you, you guys are in Augusta, right? Augusta, Maine? Yes. She works at uh, uh, Impact Strength and Fitness uh, with our good buddy and mental meathead, Chris Dwelly. So, uh, uh, Gina, go ahead and say hey. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Dave. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about... Um, your background, how you got into fitness, and uh, uh, let's just start with that. Okay. Fitness for me started way back when, um, when I was 13, and I became a shot putter and discus thrower um, back in seventh grade by the guidance of my brother, who is also a thrower. Interestingly enough, I always wanted a long jump or run, but I was always the bigger girl, so he was like, you should throw. And long story short, that is how my fitness life began. I immediately took to the shot put, and about a year later, I immediately took to the discus, which became my passion all through high school and college. Um, I was a uh, United States number two in high school, and then uh, took that to college and a scholarship for college, and then. Uh, Still continued to compete afterwards and was training for the Olympic Games as well. So I was always an athlete, a coach, involved in some type of athletics for myself or for others, and that's a big part of fitness. And coming out of college, uh, personal training just seems absolutely perfect for me because I for the industry. I'm so passionate about the industry. So. Here I am at 36, my fitness out of Chris's place. Cool, very cool. Uh, Throwing—that's a very challenging sport. Um, down here, um, track and field is is really kind of marginalized. We're we're football country, so uh, uh, I don't think you know here locally, at least the people that I deal with directly have quite an appreciation for uh, uh, the throwing sports. Um, my daughters go to a Waldorf school, and at fifth grade, they do what's called a Waldorf pentathlon, and they compete in the uh, uh, five original Olympic Games, and discus is one of them. And so I've had the opportunity to throw uh, uh, even just a juvenile disc, mm -hmm. and it's not nearly as simple as just chunking a Frisbee or, or how it looks. So that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. It seems like even when people these days, like if I'm working out or if I'm training, and people tend to gravitate towards me and like, what are you training for? Or, you know, it's usually the question, and I always, always fill out, well, I used to be a discus thrower my whole life, so <laughs> it's like I'm still a discus thrower. I haven't like truly competed since like 05, but yet I'm still a discus thrower. <laughs> nice. nice. Very cool. That's uh, uh, that's awesome. I, I, I wish I wish that that was you know a little more prevalent here. Um, it's not very prevalent in Maine either. Um, I mean, I do know Becky O'Brien, who is a great discus thrower coming out of this state, um, and but I don't really know anybody that's come out of Maine. I came out of New York originally. And the tri-state area is pretty big for it, but you're going to find West Coast and South, you know, is, is where it's at, especially uh, San Diego and UCLA. Oh, that's where it's at for throwing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so how did you end up at uh, Impact Strength and Fitness? Let's talk about Chris for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. When I was... Uh, Pregnant. Um, I'm 19. My son, our son's 19 months old, and um, about three months after I had him, I just I had to get back to normal. I was still like 45 pounds overweight, and that was not. I gained almost 75 pounds when I was pregnant. I was like waddling around. <laughs> it was like that big, and after I had him, three months later, I ended up going to the Y, you know, to just get back into things. And then I was completely bored after a first, you know, the first couple months. So I started to do my due diligence around the way and see what I'm going to feel comfortable with, where I'm going to go, what's fun and exciting. I 
came across a CrossFit box first, and I was like, okay, cool. And then right up the road was Impact Strength and Fitness with Chris. So I walked in, and it completely reminded me of when I was younger at um, – So I'm, I'm in my gym. It's the trouble that I have with other trainers around here. Well, listen, if my cat comes running across here, then we're even. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So um, when I walked into Impact, I, it completely took me back home to New York because I used to work out and work at a place called Mineola Health Club, and tires, sleds, uh, modified strongman uh, equipment, kegs, I mean, this was stuff I was doing like 10 years ago on the island, you know, pulling Toyotas in the parking lot and stuff, and it's like right in my backyard, so like, I was like goosebumps, I was like, I'm so here, so um, long story short, I spoke to Chris, Chris emailed me back, we went back and forth a little bit, and uh, the rest is history. I was there three days a week. Um, I busted my ASS. I don't know if we can curse here. <laughs> it's okay. Busted my ass. Loved training there. Um, it was a great energy. He was uh, he was awesome. You know to work with and always throwing cool and crazy things at me. Um, and that was pretty much it. And then as time went on, I was at a um, I was working in more of a corporate structure, uh, spa type of place, um, mm -hmm. and this is where Elliot Hulse's name comes up too, believe it or not. Really? Elliot, and I, Elliot and I went to college together. He played at St. John's, and I threw at St. John's. Oh, wow. But I'm not name drop. I'm not name drop, but Elliot was cool <laughs> then. He's like, I, I couldn't even believe that I didn't know what he was doing until just a couple of months ago. But when I was at that place, at the place where I was working, I was really unhappy because of the corporate structure. You know, there, we're, we're supposed to be breeding team and customer service and blah, 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 and that's not what the corporation was breeding. I knew I had to get out. I was just being complacent. I was being fearful. Long story short, I, I was on YouTube one day, Elliot's first non-job campaign video, and in 36 hours, I left that job. Wow. I walked in on that next, on that Tuesday late, my first day back of my four-day week, and I walked in. I said, I'm sorry. This is my two weeks. I am following what I want to do, and that was it. You talk about leap of faith. It's like I, I was so passionate about it. I saw that video at the perfect time, and that was it. So it's almost like Chris was talking about Elliot. I'm like, that name, that name. I know that name. And I put his video on, and within 36 hours, I was out of that corporation. And the corporation was born. That's fun. That's awesome. It's crazy how people wind up in our paths along the way. So I yeah. believe this was meant to be there at, at, at that point, too. Yeah, that's just a, a beautiful synergy of how that all falls together. That's, yeah. that's really neat. That's cool. Um, you were getting ready for your first figure show, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. That's pretty intense. That's, I, uh, go yeah, ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go. Well, I was just going to say, I, I'm, I'm very impressed by anybody who's willing to put forth um, that level of discipline and dedication. Um, because personally, I don't have it. Um, you know, I, I love, I love being fit. I love being active. I love being strong. Um, but you know, I'm I'm not built for single digit body fat, and so you know what I would have to do to get there is just is an ugliness that nobody should have to see. It's a lot of brown rice. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your experience. First of all, uh, uh, you know what prompted this madness? What uh, uh, you know? No, wow. it's madness. It's madness. You're right. Don't lose your sense. It's sense. <laughs> think. Um, it's 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 kind of a combination of things, but I'll I'll make it as compact as possible. Great. Um, I've always had a competitive drive, uh, going like I said back to high school and college. Um, post collegiate and after the Olympic trials, um, I never competed again in anything. But I always strive to be, you know, 
the best I can be. But I always like having an end goal. I always like having a vision of something that I have to attain. That's always how I perform better. Otherwise, I could be the first person to go into justification mode and take another day or take another day, believe it or not. So it all came about, uh, it actually just came about a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've been trying to figure out what I want to compete in. Do I want to do some strongman stuff? I, I got my discuses out a couple weeks ago. Do I want to try and throw again? What do I want to do? So Rob Drummond, who is, uh, okay, main strong, he's competing in Main Strongest Man. He's good friends with Chris. He's awesome himself. His energy is like electric. He comes up to me a couple weeks ago, and he's being very complimentary and saying that I look leaner and just being very nice. Sorry, that's my phone. It's totally no. cool. Do you want to get it? <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, I can wait. Call waiting. I can wait. Um, so he said that, and that came right on the cusp of one of my team members, one of my Jevolution uh, team members, a girl that trains with me. She was very um, uh, interested in doing her first show. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of hit me. I was like, if there's anything that I would have to face the fear of, it would be committing to the nutritional part of this. Um, granted, like I said, if I have an end goal, I'm pretty good. But if it's anything that I'm going to have to work my damnedest to do, it's going to be to follow a correct meal plan meal day by day, week by week, month by month. So listen, if you're going to do it, you know, do it right. Like just stand with a demon down type thing. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but so it's an ultimate challenge for me to see if I can do it. So with Rob saying what he said, Amy, my Amy Kennedy, my uh, my Jevolution partner, um, and just needing a competitive drive, it just all came together in one shot. I started researching. I contacted my brother, who's actually um, the owner one of the, if not the best wrestling school in the country. He's uh, a wrestler for TNA. And one of his students is also an IFBB pro and has been training um, people since 2002, including himself back in the day as well. And his name is Steve Namet, also known as the Hungarian Hammer. <laughs> and I spoke with my brother and his uh, father-in-law, who is Apache Dan Carr, who is a world champion arm wrestler as well. Oh, wow. This is a whole unit of support around me, and they got me in touch with Steve. And it's only been a week, but him and I have been working together, and uh, the whole thing was born. And I have a YouTube video up. My starter YouTube video is up. I'm, like, dancing around, not literally dancing around, but I'm talking, and then I'm, like, showing everybody what I look like now because... Accountability is big for me, mm -hmm. and to myself, to my partners, you know, my team, to anybody. And if it's one thing I've definitely learned in the past few months is that every single one of us, you, me, the next guy, we all need that voice of inspiration that we can connect to because we might be saying very similar things and be passionate about similar things, but somebody who connects with person A might not connect with person B. And therefore, if they never hear person B, they might never do it or get the light under their ass to do it. So I think the more we share those experiences and our struggles, fears, you know, anything like that, the more it'll light the fire under somebody else's ass to be like, I got this too. So I, that's kind of how it was born. It's like if I'm going to do this, I'm going to face it down and, and make this work. And, and that was pretty much it. Nice. Nice. <laughs> So, uh, uh, what's your diet looking like these days? Haha. -ha. Uh, right now, I'm on 2,023 calories a day, which isn't bad at all. Um, but it's six meals a day. Uh, four, my first meal right now uh, consists of um, four ounces of lean ground beef, four egg whites, a half a cup of oatmeal, and two pieces of whole wheat bread. And then the next three meals are three ounces of chicken or tilapia with a cup of rice. <laughs> and, uh, then my fourth 
that was second, third, and fourth meal. Then my fifth meal is um, another three ounces of fish or chicken with um, a half a cup of rice. And then dinner is greens and five ounces of chicken or turkey or something like that. Um, I seem to be doing well, knock on wood, but the oatmeal, it's like, oh my god, I feel like I'm eating like tar. It's like, oh. <laughs> But like I said, I'm Italian. I could eat all day, so it's better off that I'm I'm eating. And it's not that bad. Like I'm satisfied. My blood sugar is completely like I'm not spiked at all for hunger. I imagine though, the closer I get to the competition, the more people better stay out of my way. <laughs> I'm gonna be angry and starving. So you well, uh. What is the plan taping you down to? So closer to competition, what are you looking at? If you're, um, repeat that. I didn't get the first part of the question. So I, I'm assuming then that, that uh, uh, as you get closer to competition, your diet, you're going to taper down the calories. So you're at 2,200 now. So what's... I'm at, 20, I'm at 2,023 now. Okay. All right. So you're right at 2,000. So you're going down to 15, 12? Where are you going? Um, I'm not sure. Um, as the weeks go by, we're gonna we're gonna see how my body evolves and how it reacts. Nice, much smarter. Yeah, because I don't. Again, I don't believe that what works for person A works for person B. We're so physiologically and mentally different. Um, so I think we're gonna see week by week how everything goes and then make the right plan. Luckily, I do notice that when I do eat clean, um, my body is very responsive in terms of. Um, leaning out and I'm pretty muscular as is so um, hopefully I'll respond in a way that I don't have to completely starve myself. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, you're in the land of the midnight sun so you should be getting good tan right now, right? What? In Maine? Ah, it's so far north. It stays... It stays uh, uh, yeah. It... The sun comes up like first here, right? <laughs> I'm serious. Like I think we're the first state. Like the sun rises in like for like ten seconds or something. Yeah. But I I have not gotten a lot of sun this summer. I think I've just been running around and working on business and and all sorts of stuff. So I haven't been really out there much. Well, you got that 19 month old boy, right? He's he's definitely yeah. been working up a lot of your time. So. He's amazing. What a blessing he is for me and my husband. And the fun thing about him is that, like, I, on my website and on my Facebook, I have this thing called Rickzilla Says. My brother named him Rickzilla because my brother, me and my brother have, like, these ridiculous calves. So he calls himself Calfzilla. It's just a wrestling thing. It's just funny. And... Um, so he made my son Rickzilla, and so like if I want to put out like a nutritional tip or a fitness tip sometimes to have some fun with it, I'll put on my website or on my Facebook like Rickzilla says, you know, foam roll because it rules, you know, or something, you know, <laughs> something helpful so it's not always me, you know, blah blahing it out. Well, I think that's awesome. I've seen that. I really appreciate that. And uh, uh, and you're right. If anybody's paying attention, foam rolling is awesome. Get on your phone. Right. <laughs> but he is a sweet he's a sweet blessing and I, I I'll tell you he completely if anybody has kids they understand I mean he's completely changed our lives for the better and it's like you you don't realize like the inner strength you have sometimes until you have that little one and what you're capable of and I just believe everything happened at the right time and he's just such a beautiful blessing we're so blessed yeah that's cool yeah nothing changes your life like kids Absolutely. No. Now, you have children? Yeah, I have three daughters. Woo! They're, uh, uh, they're 16, 13, and 11 right now. That's awesome. So they just started school. That's uh, uh, a junior, an eighth grader, and a sixth grader. That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so, uh, um, where are we going to go next? Um, What's uh, uh, your your big upcoming event for you personally is uh, uh, is the figure event obviously. Um, what's going on professionally? What uh, uh, 
what's going on with the gym and, and with your business? Well, um, I, I launched, Jevol it's called Jevolution. Um, Jevolution. Yeah, tell us about that. Say again? Tell us more about that. I've seen that. It, that's the name of my personal training business. Um, it was originally, I thought, my, my dad had passed away in, 20, in 2010. And um, long story short, I had taken some time off from work, and I started to think about, you know, training and creating my own business. And um, I always liked the idea of evolution. I believe that, you know, we evolve as soulful beings, minute by minute, hour by hour, uh, day by day. And it's, like I said, it's physiological and mental. So the idea of like evolution, like this ever changing of us to improve, it, that, that I couldn't get away from that word. So I always think about the evolution of greatness, your evolution towards greatness, maximum genetic potential, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, just, I, I trying to piece it all together. And I was like, well, greatness, letter G, evolution. Oh, my name starts with the letter G. <laughs> this is on. <laughs> So I literally created it. This is back in uh, 2010. Um, bought the the online the .org .com, and it literally literally lingered in cyberspace for a couple of years. Uh, every time I would get the GoDaddy.com in my inbox, oh, we're gonna renew. You're gonna automatically re automatically renew. I would say, I gotta cancel this. I gotta cancel this. I gotta cancel this. I canceled it. And then, like I said, when I left that corporation, that's how Jevolution, that's, I immediately took the Jevolution on, and that's when I, I launched it. So that's on March 20th was my first um, my first day. Now, it's primarily small group training, mm -hmm. but I do offer one-on-one. -on -one, but I do find right now, again, going back to what we were talking about, about inspiration among each other, I find that right now camaraderie, Support, especially in the world that we're in right now, camaraderie, support, inspiration, peer motivation, um, connection with people is really where it's at. All the training is very powerful because it's not just me conducting a class and motivating, inspiring. Now it's like a collective energy. Yeah, I agree. I'll, I you prefer to agree. It, yeah, and and you know it's like. Being there with those folks, like seeing them, like smash challenges with each other, uh, it's it's just a powerful thing. So I primarily do most of my uh, sessions, and we do most of our sessions. Um, it's been at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7:30, excuse me, 7 a.m., 8:30 a.m. and 9:30 a.m. and then 3:30 p.m. So. They're 60 minutes, and I also do one-on-one -on -one training for people that prefer more of that private time for whatever reason. And I also work with some. I'll, I'm looking forward to working with more brides. I'm doing like one-on-one -on -one training for. Uh, I call it um, uh, the wife style, a healthy wife style, instead of wife style. Is it corny? You, you think it's corny? That's why you're giggling, right? No, but it works. <laughs> Great idea, Gina. Uh huh. <laughs> like flip tires down the aisle or something. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> so, um, so we do that, and it's really again, it's I, in the terms of how Jevolution Fitness goes, is this. Nothing bothers me more than turning on my Facebook or my YouTube or any social media and see. One fitness genre hate or bash on another fitness genre. Yeah. Nothing drives me battier. Here's the deal. If you're a power lifter, you're a cross lifter, Olympic lifter, fitness enthusiast, whatever, you're in there busting your ass, period. So I'm a big believer in an integration of many forms as long as, in my opinion, neuromuscular function, neuromuscular control, and, and, and neuromuscular excellence is what we're going after. Um, so it's a, it's a combination, cross training, um, Olympic lifting, corrective flexibility, corrective exercise, Olympic lifting, medicine ball, functional work, kettlebells, there's really nothing, ropes, rings, uh, there's really nothing that I exclude. 
If it can be picked up, we're going to pick it up, and we're going to throw it around, and we're going to do it in right form, and we're going to create good, good motor patterns. Like, that's pretty much the basis of it. Um, and we do it in groups, and, and we have a blast. You know, we get fit doing it. A big thing is I don't concentrate on scales. Um, body fat's important to me. Lean body mass is important to us. The comfort measurements. So these are the things that we gauge ourselves on um, to watch our progress. Um, but I would say that's pretty. That's pretty much it in terms of how I kind of group it together. Um, there are four words that I think that really sum up Jevolution the best, and it's uh, empower, evolve, embrace, and emerge. And I think it's kind of like a coming to be. Maybe you're in challenges physically while you're training, but you know that that's going to transfer to your real life so you can emerge more confidently and face down whatever demon that you have to. Nice. That's really cool. Is that too long? <laughs> no, not at all. I, I, I like that. I, I, I like it when uh, uh, when trainers are real enthusiastic about what they do and, and start start riffing and, and rolling on on talking about their passion so no that's that's exactly what this is all about so this uh, uh, that's very cool to hear you say well, this is the perfect moment for me to tell you and everybody how like honored and excited I was that you invited me to do this I was so excited so to see that somebody who's so passionate about the industry in me or from my work or my writing or whatever I'm like so proud of it and so appreciative. Well, that's very sweet of you to say. It. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, um, it's cool. I, I, I think you know the whole point of this whole interview series and, and doing these things is is building these connections and, and creating opportunities for uh, uh, for trainers to realize that there are other like-minded people out there and, and you know to build community and, and a sense of of development and growth amongst us because it's real easy to get battered and, and think that you know well, I'm the only one that thinks this way or I'm the only one that does this sort of thing and, and right. you know the internet's a great tool for knocking down those barriers and, and, and creating an opportunity to build you know extensive long-range tribes yeah. So, cool. yeah I wish you are you coming out to our kettlebell Jason Z Brown's coming down to do I, am, I have plans to come up for that so yes I'll meet you like in person. Yeah, I'm very stoked about that. So uh, uh, let's. Uh, in fact, let's uh, uh, let's throw out a little plug for that real quick. Um, that's September the 14th uh, at Impact Strength Fitness. Jason C. Brown is going to be doing a level one certification. Um, where do people need to go to sign up for that? You know what? Um, uh, there's a link. There'll be a link on my Jevolution Fitness Facebook. Or on the Impact Strength and Fitness Facebook, we've been running the link on there. Um, you can completely just click on there and register for it. I think there's still a couple spots left, and I believe it's on the 14th and 15th. That's the Saturday and Sunday of September. Um, and I've never met Jason in person either, but Chris speaks and you so highly of Jason, so highly of you as well. And there's actually a gentleman named John Buckley out in the West Coast who runs uh, Orange Kettlebell Club. And when he found out that I was getting this cert, we went to high school together, me and John, and when he found out that I was going to be meeting with Jason and everything, he was like, that's awesome. It's the first kettlebell certification he got, and he's blowing up on the West Coast, and you know, he was very thankful for that certification. So I'm pumped just to know that I'm going to be part of it, too. Excellent, excellent, very cool. Yes. Totally come out to that. Yeah, Jason C. Brown, he's he's the top of his game. If uh, uh, if for some horrible reason that you cannot make the uh, uh, the Augusta Main cert, uh, or if luck, if hopefully it sells out, there's also the possibility. The following weekend, Jason's going to be in Indianapolis for Mental Meatheads two. Uh, which <laughs> I'll go ahead and throw a plug out. There will be links both to uh, uh, the Augusta cert uh, uh, and Mental Meatheads 2 uh, uh, available um, in the uh, uh, description area for this video and also on uh, uh, the uh, my blog site and website where the audio portion will be available. Um, so you guys come out. This is going to be a really cool event. Jason is uh, uh, 
top of his game. He's uh, uh, he's one of the best presenters that uh, uh, that I've ever worked with, and uh, I'm very excited to be able to hang out with him two weekends in a row. So that's going to be fun. I'm glad I'm going to be a part of it. I'm really super stoked that it's going to be right in the backyard. Really. Very cool. Thanks um, for bringing Jason down too. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. So if uh, uh, if I'm in the Augusta main area and I want to come train with you, how do I get in touch with you? How do I find you specifically? There's multiple ways. Uh, again, with social media, I do have a Facebook page under Jevolution Fitness, uh, G E V O L U T I O N Fitness. Um, I have my regular Facebook page also under Gina Lomonaco. Um, I have a phone number that I'm not giving out, <laughs> but you can also email me at gina at jevolutionpt.com, um, and I also have a YouTube channel. It's under Jevolution Fitness, Twitter, Jevolution Fitness, so you'll find me. Excellent. Very, very cool. We'll, uh, uh, we'll definitely include that uh, uh, those links, and uh, uh, it sounds like if you look up Jevolution Fitness, we're going to find you. Pretty much. My big dorky smile. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, is there anything else that, that, uh, uh, that you want to tell anybody, everybody? You know, is there anything that we've not touched on that, that you'd like to express? No, I just, um, I mean, to anybody who is passionate about any industry I, or anything, I couldn't be honest or more, I couldn't possibly stress how important it is for us now in this day and age to follow what we're passionate about instead of just following what we think we're supposed to be doing or, you know, paths that have been laid down that, you know, it, it, how do I put it into words? Forget it. Just follow what it is that you love and what you're passionate about. It's not work then. It's passion. And you it and you grow, and all of a sudden, you will be completely surrounded by people who love it and are as passionate as much as you are. And you will grow, and they will grow, and your life will grow, and your heart will grow. And that's really what it's about right now. That that's what this new emergence is these days. It's about the Dave Halls, and it's about the Elliot Hulses and the Chris Duellies, and, and all the other people that I'm photographer friends and forest friends, people who are doing what they love. Because everybody else, it's got to keep that happiness and that passion going because that, that's where it's at right now. Absolutely. So, don't be scared of anything. Just it's, Everything has its beginning in mind. Thomas Troward, the father of mental science. That's what I'm talking about. Right on. Well, thank you so much, Gene. I really appreciate uh, uh, you taking pleasure. the time today. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Me too. This is completely my pleasure. I hope uh, people watch and, and feel good about it. Yeah, definitely. I know they will. I know they will. Well, have a great day, everybody. Uh, uh, this has been another Mental Meatheads interview. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Um, thanks for listening or watching or however it is that you're catching this. Uh, and don't forget, uh, Jason C. Brown will be in Augusta, Maine, uh, September 14th and 15th. Uh, Jason C. Brown and Chip Conrad will be in Indianapolis September 21st and 22nd. So those are two great possibilities, two awesome weekends. Uh, don't miss out. Catch them if you can. You guys take care.